stand out, specifically targeted at Link. It has been, and honestly, that's that's the Monte Cristo coaching. He's been forcing them to say, "Look, look at objectives. Look for." They, actually, they are they're still like last place in taking like first dragon in game CLG, but they're still holding up in objectives, taking turrets and whatnot, and making the rotations happen. So the Thrash band away there from Aphromill. He'll need a new support for this one. Although it's sadly it's Coast Daydreaming who loves these hook supports. I'm not going to get Thrash here. All right, yeah, Thrash. Definitely one of the premier supports not on the table, but Leona and Annie still available. CLG have uh, the option to ban out one of those, and they do take it. So two supports banned away. Are they going to force Coast into the third, like heavily popular support of Leona and leave other things up? Or it's is funny it a new first pick? because Lulu also used to be sort of like the fourth tier, uh, the fourth support around. Yeah. But since she's so popular at mid now, also being banned out, you can mm -hmm. kind of consider three support bands there as well. Kind of daring Coast to go with Leona. Well, I mean, other than the, the Leona, um, there's been one Alistair game played by Aphromoo. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, someone's going to have to play a new champion uh, in the support pool. We'll see where it goes. 20 seconds till first pick here for Coast. And they're really considering this one. Like, you would normally, if you knew it, you just lock it in and be like, yeah, great, at least done. But here they're like, well, shoot, okay, so either Daydream and play something new, or we go Leona, or Nintendo gets Elise, or the LeBlanc comes through for Shifter. Mm -hmm. That's now, they're gonna go. usually this team saves their solo picks for later so they can um, counter pick mm -hmm. because they rely so heavily on these solos. But LeBlanc does not have a lot of inherently bad matchups. Yeah. Really, the only matchups you know that can take her out, like uh, you know Oriana and um, Syndra, are very good on her one versus one. But they're mm -hmm. very vulnerable to be uh, ganked. LeBlanc True. can set up ganks so well. You know, even Shifter has been outspoken. He's like, yeah, I would love to tip play Syndra into LeBlanc, but you have to worry junglers about exist. the junglers. Exactly. Yeah. Junglers are going to interfere with that lane matchup. So it's a very, very good all-around pick. You know, as we said, at the beginning of the weekend, she was undefeated. Yeah. But uh, no longer. Scumbag Voiboy. Here we go. Renekton Elise grabbed for Counter Logic Gaming. So early game pressure, already the name of the game for these guys. And if you're going to gank a lane, you might as well gank Renekton. Yeah. Before Renekton. So Nien on Renekton, to me, uh, is a bit interesting because Nien's a top lane planner, uh, top lane player that has not won his lane, uh, yeah, very much at all, if at all, in any of the games. So him being on Renekton, he's got to win his lane, and he's got to watch the tendency that he has to get overconfident when he has a CS lead. Mm -hmm. He'll he will go behind the turret and he will proxy, but. He has a knack for getting caught, and he doesn't seem to um, be able to find his way out of those situations. So it might be a bit of a catch here for Counter-Logic Gaming, having Yen on a champion like Renekton that's going yeah. to get a CS lead early. We'll have to watch if he gets a little overzealous with his uh, diving and his deep farming. If you can hold that down, I feel like it's a smart choice since uh, one of the two big coast plays is Zion Spartan gets fed, the other mm -hmm. being Shifter gets fed. Um, so Shifter to get his first pick. Caitlyn Leona, the pickup here for Coast's bottom lane. All the support bands come through, and Leona still gets grabbed up. The Alistair does yeah. come through. So everyone puts on repeat performances, and there's the vein for double lift. I, I feel like that was perfectly orchestrated by CLG. They dared him into taking Leona. Yeah. He very predictably picked up Leona, and Aphromoo pulls out his Alistar that he's very comfortable on. Yeah. And if you play Alistar into Leona, it's great. If she gets a Zenith Blade onto you anywhere near your turret, you could just pulverize her and then knock her into turret range and yep. uh, turn the tables on her. He's a really good matchup versus Leona because he can brawl just as well. I just had a thought. So Dadium is hovering over Blitzcrank. Yeah. The thing is, we've had Nintendo He's, play jungle Leona. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I mean, it's not really happening. But I'm just like, we've seen this before. It's true. We he, have. He jungled worth. Leona one time last year. Yes. And it did. It was not pretty. So. Okay, no. <laughs> I mean, Leona's pretty, but... Nintendo, though, on Leona. Also, okay. That that one, the image together, not not so much. Uh -oh. um, now Lee we just Sin. spawned a whole bunch of uh, yeah, photoshops. We're, we're <laughs> oh, gosh. You started this. Um, Shivana there in the top lane. Going to go through for Zion Spartan. Uh, going to be probably a little bit weak early on against Renekton. And Lee Sin here for Nintendo. Not something we've seen him on at all this year. Yeah, and that's definitely going to put more pressure on him. He has the capabilities to fight this Elise, though. We already saw Medios using Elise very effectively counter-jungling earlier today. Mm -hmm. uh, but Lee Sin, you do not want to find him in the jungle, uh, one versus one. If yeah. Elise can get off her combo you know, from Praga War, then she does have a good chance in the duel. But if she's the one spotted out first, it's going to be really painful. So 
I do like that, matching the early game power. Both junglers have a lot of uh, moves available to them very early on. Well, we'll see what happens with this game. Top laners, Bruiser guys gonna fight each other. The early game junglers here as well. The Orianna, you predicted that pick. You're getting a champ select, and that comes through there, supporting the Vayne. This game seems to be the late game hopes resting a lot on double lift here for Counter Logic Game. Now, Orianna, not only is it you know, good against LeBlanc. Uh, mm -hmm. They also have extra shields for double lift, which CLG loves to do. Yeah. So speeding up and shielding double lift, uh, definitely a bonus effect here for this CLG comp. I think the comp's looking pretty good for them, uh, relying on classic CLG strategies yep. that can be seen on the spinner. Solo mm -hmm. pushing AD carry. We'll, well they, see if they, they actually go through with that. Yeah, well, he's got to lose the lane first to make that happen, though, uh, in order to carry his 50 minutes on Vayne. And they've already won more than one game in a row, so they've already broken one of those spinner options. As the teams load into the ramp, let's check out who you think is going to come out on top. And according to LLEsports.com, 77% of you think that CLG are going to take the win. Fan votes definitely behind these guys. We'll see if they can keep it up. Is Coast dethroned a 6%? Yeah, I mean, that is actually a pretty big vote for Coast. They yeah. usually get very, very small, uh, a lot of times single-digit votes, but their huge win over TSM, uh, mm -hmm. definitely getting them a lot more votes here, and it's definitely giving them a lot more confidence, too. Jack kept on talking about how much that can do to boost the team's morale yeah. and affect their play positively in uh, consecutive matches. And that entire team has been putting up good performances. You think about last week, and it was really like the Zion Spartan and Shifter show just kind of by themselves, and, and honestly, all of it started by Zion. But here, you've got Coast with everyone on the roster putting up some good shows. Crowd's ready for the game. We are as well. Here we go into game three of day two here in this week. Coast in blue, Counter Logic Gaming in red. Whoa, okay. It's going to be fun. Alistar starting off with the coin from uh, Aframu. There's a possibility of going for a two versus one switch now. Uh, Alistar does not have the combat stats for early laning now. He's going with the gold item. And he yeah. would definitely benefit a lot if they did a lane swap because he'll have extra gold from that. But as we said, you know, the turrets now, much harder to take in top lane. And you also give up control of the dragon area. But in exchange, you get an early, easy lane for Vayne for double lift. So yeah, I don't know if they will actually pull the trigger on this because especially their coach has been outspoken in uh, you know, not liking the 2 versus one switches at all since the tower changes. Well, just to kind of consider that thought for a second, Alistair is probably better at surviving like a 2v2 jungle gank. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in 1v2 and the jungle comes to help the top lane, Alistair can headbutt him away. Leona kind of gets stuck there and gets yeah, CC'd could, up. Yeah, just one stun, whereas Alistar could deal with both. Yeah, and he pushes them away, so we'll see. Coast right now is Fujin chilling in the tri brush on the bottom side. Coast right here sitting on a, on a good win rate so far. Yeah, and... Something else about this CLG bottom lane that you always have to take into account is they will play losing two versus two matchups. Yeah. Even if they're set up champions on paper, looks like it should be on the losing end of a matchup. They don't care because they have so much confidence in their play that they feel like they can usually outplay their opponents even if, uh, according to the stats, they're supposed to lose it. Well, we'll see if they can defy the odds here. Daydream going to wait around the brush with Fusion as well. Looks like both AD carrying support not going to help their junglers. What we do have, though, is the junglers starting at different spots in the map. Right, so they will end up on different sides, and Elisin ending up bottom might be trouble for this Aframu double lift lane because all teams usually want to focus double lifts early to um, sort of get him behind. Uh, and we'll have to see if that does come to fruition. Team Coast. Let's see if they can get a double lift now, getting some of his minions. Doing an okay job with this one, actually. I gotta say, he prepped that entire wave from beforehand. Yeah. He like, knew it was gonna reach the turret and got all of them low and got five uh, minion kills under his turret. Plan no early, help from the plan early game for them is obviously just to try and uh, keep up in CS because they will have the late game scaling from Vayne plus the early gold lead on Aframu from that gold item that he started. Mm -hmm. As long as they're able to sustain with the heals from Afro and double lift is uh, able to do a very good job of CSing under turret, which he should. You know, he usually maxes tumble first. That helps out a lot. It's true. We'll see if he goes for the Bloodthirster build in this game as well. Shifter in the mid lane against Link. I want to see how this matchup goes. Link got to pick last and counterpick the champion, but Shifter, they trusted their first pick with LeBlanc on him. So uh, both these teams putting a lot of weight on the shoulders of these two mid lane players. We'll see where this one goes. The early push going in towards Link, but now that the junglers have uh, gotten both their buffs. They should be available to gank, but they're just farming for now. Yeah, junglers trying to farm up uh, until there's a good opportunity to gank. 
And meanwhile, the mid lane, both of them have actually just used regular um, runes. They're not going for hybrid runes for any sort of auto attack, extra auto attack harass. Um, I mean, Link definitely wants to thread in as many autos as he can get just because Orianna has the passive. Uh, but they aren't going for the super lane bullying early. I'm gonna start things out actually. A small minion lead here for Link. Under the lane right here, Aphromoot and Double Lift winning around. Their Silver Bolts learned to level 3. Both supports did go deep utility. You're seeing that plus 1 or plus 3 gold tick up whenever something nearby dies. Mm -hmm. They got that mastery, so they went at least 17 points into, into utility. Keep that in mind for you guys. Even the LCS supports are running deeper there. I know in. Um, throughout the last couple of years, most supports would run like heavy defense tree and like not even gold pretend quints. Well, compared yeah, to, like, solo Q supports. it definitely complements his item build, especially mm -hmm. you know starting out with the coin. He's obviously going for gold generation, and they're doing an amazing job of CSing on the defensive. They're okay with Caitlyn pushing uh, and not going for trades. Meanwhile, Nintendo really wants. To make the last hit can land the root. Ooh, jukes the tether. That would have been a silence into a root and the damage. Not going to get much there. Zion, Spartan, and Nian haven't watched them much. A five minion kill lead growing slightly here for Nian. Not too bad considering it is Renekton, but Dexter's coming to make this one exciting. Still got the red buff for about 30 more seconds. He's going to look for this top lane fight. So Nian chooses to go to the lane that is winning for him. Uh, a lot of the times, people gank lanes that are just pushed up. You know, that's just sort of the natural reaction when your team is getting pushed in. But he can go complement the lead that Nian already has in this lane. And they're going to go for even the turret dive. Well, they're going to land two stuns. Zion Spartan low on health. Flashes backwards. There's Nian in the front lines as well. Trying to flash out of the way. Zion Spartan, one hit from dead. And that's first blood going over the deck group. The outplay comes in. CLG 1-0. So the second benefit of ganking a lane that is pushing in your favor is not only your laner is going to have the advantage, and you know, he was a level up, and he also has uh, more health, but after you get the kill, the lane pushing in your favor means that all the minions are going to die to the turret. So Zion Spartan also lost a lot of CS there. Bit of damage on a double if Zaydream in a little bit alone on this one, puts the Eclipse Shield on, has to walk away. Of course, you can't put armor and MR against true damage, but they trade blows 44 to 38 minions so far, so a bit of a minion move. And that's the reason they're picking Alistar into Leona. Uh, as you saw, Aphromoo able to knock away the AD carry so that even though Double Lift got locked down by the CC, there's no damage to follow it back up. And then he returns to pulverize Daydreaming uh, so they can't chase him down. And well done right here. The push still continuing for this Caitlyn Leona lane. Both these guys relying on basically Trinket Wards to stay alive. I don't have awards in the inventory anymore, but no junglers have shown up to turn this lane around just yet. This top lane, I'm scared for Coast right here because it's pushing in towards Nian's turret, and Zion already can't fight him. And it's again a repeat gank from Dexter because the flash was burned from Zion trying to survive under his turret. He knows that he's very vulnerable again. And as you said, lane pushing in his favor, uh, he might extend a little bit too far here. Nian looking to repel in because he knows there's no uh, ultimate from Zion right now either, so he can't dash away. But in the bottom lane, though, Double is taking even more damage. You said that CLG is happy to fight a, a losing TBG match with the stun on the Zion empowered stun at that one. More damage coming through ulti pop. Can Zion get out from this one? Doesn't really manage Still to dodge any stuns just yet. He's trying to run around. Oh, he killed. No, not enough for six. Still running away. Dexter still on the chase. Cocoon Ooh, doesn't hit. Zion's on the run, but Link's coming to cut him off on the right-hand side. The flash in from Dexter. They're still trying this one. Yeah, he's going to get caught here. It's a slow shockwave just to make sure. Two assists coming through as well, making that one happen. And hey, Nian's got enough help to win his lane. So, Nintendo, even though their top laner died, never mind. Double lift getting attacked. Oh, and the there stun under the turret. That is not good for Danger. And so much damage coming across. Last turret shot. Not going to make it happen, though. Barely gets out from that one. But now there's some low health points. Oh, that was exactly the play I was talking about in Champ Select, but now Coast are looking to capitalize on it. Nintendo and Shifter both roam down there a little bit too late. Double lift and Afro make the right call, getting out of there as quickly as possible. Close game. Sunlight and Peacemaker come through, killing away the minions. Nian, hey, double the CS of Zion Spartan now, but the push in the bottom does give Shifter, oh, gives Nintendo Whoopsies. blue buff. He's got his own. It's okay. Yeah, but he would definitely rather uh, give that over early to Shifter. So a yeah. little bit of a misclick there from Nintendo Won't hurt them too much. As you said, they still can go take their own. He's got a ward on the blue side. 
of the river here for in the, in the mid lane from mm -hmm. Shifter. So if Dexter goes to try and counter his blue, they will be tipped off. Oh, there's a harass on to Link. He probably wish he had 10 CDR and some mana regen, but Shifter won't have that here. Link with a Chalice and the Flask there, so plenty of sustain and magic resist. The CLG duo lane has returned to lane BF Sword indeed mm -hmm. here for double. So, yep, that's going to be him maxing Tumble. And uh, I like that lane yeah. ward uh, from them. Not only does it uh, notify them when uh, Daydream is looking to attack from the bushes with mm -hmm. Leona and allow Afro to get off that counter, but... It also notifies them when there's the lane gank coming from Nintendo, which is really what they're worried about. Well, here we go. The engage in the bottom lane. Knock again. up and the stun on a daydream and into the wall again. Level six, though, goes for double. Level five, Bane only. Level six here for the Coast Duel lane, but it's not enough. Not going to find anything more here. Yeah, so even though he gets knocked into turret, Wiz Fusion's spending that time getting more damage onto double up. So they trade damage on support for damage on AD carry. And that's going to make it a little bit harder for Double Lift to CS because he has to constantly be worried about this harass. Well, Dexter going to sweep away the ward. Pink ward was used and uh, didn't unfortunately mean much for that coast lineup. Zion Spartan fighting under turret, getting minions very far down. It'll take a long time for Shivana to catch up in this matchup. That is one thing to worry about for the coast fans out there because he tends to be an important factor. Only 2,400 gold on poor Zion Spartan there. Meanwhile, everyone else on CLG doing fairly nicely. 2,500, or 1,500, mm -hmm. I should Looks say. Looks like a Dragon team. Call here. Uh, pretty early, and they do not know that CLG are closing in. Very dangerous move. Hey, okay, stun doesn't land. Wizfusion gonna jump over the wall. Shockwave onto two. Very good start for this one. Daydreaming, still running away. Can they get the knockup? Yes, they do. Afro move picks it up. Hmm. Going good for start. the Dragon when they are not 100% sure they've got control of it. CLG do a great job reacting to the movement, uh, and they just counter the dragon. They not only are rewarded with a kill, but also the objective here. Oh, Steel does not come through there for Wiz Fusion. He didn't even bother smiting. Didn't need to. No steals available. Zion did stay in the top lane to keep killing minions, but uh, you're just seeing Nian over and over and over again find more plays for farm. He just killed that poor little white camp. He's level 9 to Zion's 8. It's only getting worse. And Yen, I have to say, he's doing a good job. He hasn't um, made any reckless plays. Even though he got that really big CS lead, he's done a great job. Look at the two wards that he's placed on the blue side. He feels confident in uh, farming between the turrets. And because so there's Zion. so much action later or on the other side of the map, you know, he hasn't had to worry too much. Zion trying to answer here at mid. Ooh. He's trying to make a play with shift here onto Link. There's a jump in forward. Root's not going to land. Get a bit of turret damage. Zion's gonna have to get back to his lane uh, soon-ish. Okay, looks to use the uh, that time to push for a gank instead of taking some minions. Doesn't find anything for it though. Now with Renekton constantly uh, farming between the turrets here, uh, it's it's kind of draw more resources eventually up from CLG. Zion, uh, it was trying to make something happen mid, but he has to return constantly to that top lane to deal with these waves that are constantly gonna die mm -hmm. to the outer turret. Yeah, Nien's just been grabbing like wolves and, and the white over and over again in between wave farms. I gotta point out though, Nintendo, the jungler here for Coast, went for Madrid's yeah. opener. Very Bare, different opening. It's a rare item uh, to see on the on some of the script, especially in the LCS. Shifter getting down some harass. Okay, because you know it turns into that Wriggles, which is a very unpopular item because you have to farm very heavily. And there's a knockback onto his Fujin. They're just not able to deal the damage. The Aphromu Alistair pickup there just completely working out. Knocks up Daydream and pushes back the AD carry. You never see the damage really come through on a double lift. He's bodyguarding very successfully. Yeah, so uh, with Nintendo going for that um, Madreds into maybe a Wriggles, I'm very interested to see if he actually completes the Wriggles or if he buys Sightstone instead and leaves Madreds till much later. Um, possibly selling it. He will be missing out on all that gold income from conservation, which is so, so beneficial, though. That's true. That was kind of like the signature Nintendo style from last split. Was very, very low farm, and kind of he just relied on his teammates for everything. But that might just hold him back really far in this now, game. Now, that style of play is fine if you can make the plays to get true. your teammates ahead. He hasn't been able to make anything happen. Zero, zero, zero here um, without, you know, getting a lot of the extra gold for himself. It's going to be a problem for them late. Well, mid lane taking some damage there. Shifter on the first pick LeBlanc, but here comes Nian. He's going to chase down. Can he look for Lee Sin? Doesn't find anything here in the 10 dude level. Eight to Dexter's. Actually, eight, I think, as well for the Elise there. So 
Nintendo is holding up at the very least, but the mid lane push not coming back in for CLG. They look for the mid lane. Yeah, both top laners getting bored up there, and they've decided to both roam mid for the three versus three. I do like this move from CLG because their jungler is at least much better at uh, turret fights than Lee Sin, and able to harass people under turret as well as look for the stray cocoon, which yeah. could uh, could turn everything around. Definitely could. We'll see what he can do with the Elise here. Going for the blue buff again. This one will go to Kinologic Gaming, so Link gets his first blue buff of the game. And the other interesting thing to note about Nintendude is uh, he's maxing Tempest and Cripple, the E, first. Mm -hmm. Mostly as soon as I see Max Q and go for the Execute damage and try to kill people off 1v1. Oh, they're going for it! Well, I see the knockback there with Fusion's right in the fray and gets exhausted and stunned. So much damage comes through. Dexter picks up the first kill and he's not done. Chasing for Daydreaming. A little more damage coming across, but no stuns left from the lineup. Gets away, but another one for zero. Constantly, CLG finds kills. Yes, they got the kill, and now they have pressure on the turret because the only people left are melee. Lee Sin and Leona, very, very tough time defending turrets. So CLG should be able to get a lot of work done on the bottom side of the map. Look at this top lane fight, though. Zion Spartan's two levels down. It was pushing around Nian there, which is a Sunfire K versus Tiamat. Ign Ignites come through as well. This fight's going to be really close, but Nian Zion and needs to flash away. Zion winning the 1v1 two levels down. That is one of the drawbacks there for the, the Tiamat early. You know, he's got great shoving, but he had a hard time dealing with Zion and the confidence there. We may be seeing a repeat. This is a, a definite hope for Coast because whenever they do win, it's the solo laners that get going. Finally, they've got something to work with uh, mm -hmm. up top. And meanwhile, Shifter has got his death fire now on LeBlanc. Yep. So last time they won a game yesterday, it was solo lane kill and then another solo lane kill. Yeah. We'll have to see if Shifter can actually follow up Zions and do something for himself too. He's going to have to work with that Fog of War to make it happen though. Yeah. And he's going to have to contend with a double who's had a pretty decent lane so far as well. Vayne, known for killing off those frontline tanky guys who are building for uh, just the durability. So they're both cutting through them. So that's another fight that I want to see happen later on in this game. It's, if Shifter can't take him out. I feel like the mind games from Champion Select from CLG were so strong. Uh, they really wanted this matchup for their duo lane. And that's exactly what they got. They've yep. capitalized on it beautifully. Able to even call in Dexter for only one game. Dexter didn't spend a lot of time down bottom. No. They just called him when they knew they had the flash advantage. And were able to get the kill on the AD carry. So very, very good start for Double Lift. This mid lane turret will finally go down. Shifter's going to find that. Nintendo behind didn't go for the fight, actually. He had no idea if there's a jungler around, and Shifter didn't try to fight Link. Yeah, well, the dragon up in 15 seconds does mean that you want to be a little bit more cautious. You don't want to get chunked out right before dragon spawns, because yeah. uh, anybody going back to base would mean that it's very easy for either of these junglers to take dragon. And it looks like CLG definitely have that one on their list right now. Wow. Shifter roamed up top at the, per at the you know, most detrimental time. Yeah, they're looking for a Nian who's pulling all sorts of attention. That's classic CLG. Top laner overextends, pulls people down, team gets dragged anyway. Nian's still running about. I feel like he's just safe anyway. He's done such a good job here. He's found a nice little hiding spot that war. and wasted so much time from Shifter. As I said earlier, he's done such a better job this time around, warding up in the side that he is farming between turrets. Mm -hmm. It's allowed him to make these plays. And usually, he would die to something like that. But this game, he's playing beautifully, uh, except for that one versus one with Zion where he got you know, soloed. Yeah, <laughs> we'll forget that, about though. that one. It's okay, he's got most of his Sunfire Cape done now as well, so I feel like he'll survive a bit more. With Fusion Daydreaming now in this bottom lane, they got Nintendo to support this one. But here comes Link to jump in from Daydream, oh, but this base. could be a little bit too much. Double it, getting lower on health. Lots of shields on him, the chase in from Nintendo. It's going to be a flash away from Double. There's the Kate ulti blocked up by Aphromoo. True support there, and it's a disengage. Yeah, it turns into a four on four here. Uh, Difficult seeds, but the ultimate's in favor of CLG right now. Shifter really wants to make a play with his Deathfire from the side. Well, he's going to look for Afro, but it's going to be a cow with an ultimate. You don't want to go for that one. Stun does land. Not good for Shifter. Shockwave. Oh. Dodge with Flash. But you still don't want to lose your Flash for that one. So close right there. Great job by Shifter. Uh, spamming, <laughs> spamming his W to get out as quickly as possible. Soon as Cocoon ends. But now it's CLG still able to push. Zion Spartan actually taking two waves now. He took a uh, top lane in front of the inhibitor, took mid, and is now roaming down. But Nien's going to answer that as well. Yeah, he cancels uh, the previous idea. Decides to go fight Nien again. He had good results the first time, 
But Nien has bought since then, and yeah. he's added on uh, some defenses, so he'll have a little bit easier of a time. Yeah, all Zion added was a Negatron Cloak, which does almost nothing against Renekton. Yeah. So that matchup, much different from last time. We'll see how these guys pan up. Looks like Lee Sin still winning around the 10, dude. He's constantly defending this turret. CLG have been waiting for this siege for so long. And with a 4,000 gold lead, they're finally going to make the way all the way in. Another outer turret goes down. CLG finding their first turret kill of the game, just 19 minutes in. Uh -oh. The end, the root's going to land. Shifter could have the damage. The end pops ulti, and they're not going to go for it. Yeah, and uh, Shifter still in range of him, though. Trying to buy time for Zion to push up top, see if they can answer. A lot of good pink ward coverage yeah. on the bottom side of the map for CLG. That's three of them. You can't get to the uh, river without getting spotted. They really want to protect the duo that's doing so well right now. Zion's still on the push. There's a Q lands on Avramu. Alistair's still not a guy you want to dive. Bloodthirster done on both AD carries. Double lift also has gone back to buy, moving towards Zeal. So a more powerful AD carry right now. And double going to be sent to split push top lane. But we got 30 minutes to go until he's got two carries. people though. Shifter coming in hot. Can he outplay Zion? The roots not going to hit right here. They need more damage coming through the knockback there. Lower health on double lift goes left. Gets the outplay, oh. but ignite is enough. Zion part. Zion Spartan gets the kill. Two, two and zero. Only guy in the scoreboard. Yeah, they uh, they actually did let the spinner land on double lift, trying to soak up farm. He didn't get very far with no. his vein split push. His there. own second turret. It was only at his own turret <laughs> there, so it wasn't even like double lift. Uh, going to get greedy and farm a long minion wave. It was just him trying to clear out the minions at his own turret and then go for jungle camps. I can't believe Zion's taking this fight. He's basically down a team at in combat stats. Ooh, he's got flash buddies forest. Though. He does. He's up a LeBlanc. It's worth more than a team at. Yes. A shifter. Yeah, it's always nice to have a shifter in your inventory. You can pull out at any time. That'd be awesome. I would win so many more games of League of Legends if I could just like have shifter as a starting item. Link definitely uh, wanting to shove this lane down as well. Looks like they are just going to try and regroup right now. Um, Coast definitely more on defensive, and you can tell that from their ward placements. Uh, the pink ward's all on their side of the jungle. They're more worried now about invades down bottom, that their turret was lost. And yeah. the red side jungle, definitely a point that CLG want to push. Well, this is going to be a turret equalized here, and Coast, to be completely honest, are winning the, the turret objective game. They're up 3-2. to two. They are down the Dragons, but they're still finding good things to do, holding on nicely to this match. Kind of logic gaming, of course, kind of a very reserved game. They found some very strong ganks. Dexter, 100% kill participation, making everything happen. Red buff goes to his fusion. Link getting a second blue of this game as well. So the invades have stopped happening as well from Coast. Yeah. They, they're definitely feeling the gold difference, though. You can tell they only farm the lane when they're sure that they have coverage and they have pushed all the way to their side of the map. The only person really venturing into enemy territory is Zion. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the only confident man because he's gotten the kills and he's been able to deal with his lane opponent 1 over 1. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Shifter still working on finding somebody else to kill. They only were able to catch out double at once. See what else he can find under this one. A very defensive build did come through for Link. Merc creds on top of Athenes. It might even be like Zonia's over Death Cap, though I doubt it. But we'll see what Link does with this one. Um, but certainly lower damage by not getting Sork Shoes. Aphromoo sweep away the wards. You can't shield wards, but that's okay. You can still jump to him. The knock back. Well played on that one. More wards gonna kill though, so this pink ward's gonna fall. Now, if we go on the same path here as the game is already going, CLG are gonna have a pretty big advantage moving into the late game. They've got great team fight here. Uh, as we said, Link doing very well in mid, and with an AD like Vayne, and an AD um, Vayne manned by double lift, they have really, really good options for the team fight. It's gonna, it's gonna turn into a very difficult situation for Coast if they can't pick somebody off. They really need LeBlanc to uh, get some of those kills from Frog of War. See what they find. It's a stun on the Zion's part. Not going to be good. Cocoon lands, but he does jump over the wall. It's going to be a safe dragon, but the ulti's going to time out before too long. Afro goes in on a shifter. They have the damage there from Link. They jump over the wall as well from Shifter here. And it's a disengage once more. Still 4 to 2 in kills. Dragon is up, though, so the Zion ultimate being down definitely going to be a pretty big point for them. Nintendo could go up. for the steal, but it's very dangerous. He has flash and smite. Nope. Does not land it in time. Well picked up by Dexter. Slightly early smite, but the Q comes through, makes it happen. That's another dragon. I believe three now for Counter Logic Gaming. 
a 5,000 gold lead is what these guys are rewarded with. And I gotta say, a lot of that money is actually among the junglers. 7,400 to 5,000 between the two of them. The Golem Spirit is worth about 300 overall. Well. Looks like Coast are grouping up top here and double lift farming bottom. So they want to make a move on the top side of the map while AD is by. A lot of bursts on again, and he's going to be going down. No magic list on that champion yet in the build. And it's another kill going over towards Zion's Martin. He has every single kill for his team. Daydreaming on the front line stun, forced to run away. And it's to disengage. Yeah, Yen immediately purchasing that Spectre's cowl as soon as he died. Uh, so that he can get some magic resist, deal with the slow burn from Shivana and the burst! Oh, oh my god! Gigantic shockwave! What's gonna happen now? Dexter finds one, the dive in towards the back. Danger been trying to run away. He will fall down. Dexter with two. The Lee Sin Q not gonna get followed up on CLG. Just getting the two for zero in the undermanned fight. Very well played. Yeah, they could have even left double lift split pushing bottom. He could be down at that wave right now. Uh, that was just a pure outplay there from Aphromoo and Link combined. Beautiful. Beautiful ball delivery system that they've got. All right, so Wiz Fusion gets hit by the Cocoon, and then Afro goes in for the three-man Crescendo, or not Crescendo, Shockwave. Able to take out uh, the low HP targets there. Dexter goes deep even to finish off Leona. Very well executed from CLG. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great ultimate overall. Great fight. Now six to three, seven thousand gold that number keeps growing i mean honestly with the kills being this close you wouldn't see the gold being that far apart but it just is right now the point i was making was that the uh, golden spirit that was picked up now worth 406 bonus gold to dexter so far it's part of the reason he's got this gold lead here because we talked about madrid's not you know having the conservation passive right and he hasn't upgraded to wriggles because uh, not a lot of people having faith in that item it really makes you farm the jungle, and mm -hmm. that takes all the pressure off of your lanes. It's just completely counterproductive to Lee Sin playstyle. So he went for just the Sight Stone, but without the gold generation, uh, he's not doing much because he's still 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Well, we'll see if the ward coverage from the Sight Stone can help them enough here. You got CLG running up towards the top of the map, looking to deal with the Zion Spartan split push. That's been the recipe for success in week five for Coast. Here in week six, it's not done quite as much here. Doublelift will be squaring off against him in spirit. He's going to the same lane. And Doublelift at 8,600 gold uh, is actually still poorer than Zion Spartan. I do want to see how that matchup actually fares when they do fight 1v1. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one. Uh, Zion has not yet... Oh, he has gotten the attack speed reduction, so he's already got Warden's Mail. That will help him out a lot in a duel versus Bane. Yeah. That's basically the best defensive item versus a Bane for, uh, for a, the amount of gold that you have to purchase. Yeah. yeah. Just as soon as you can get the Wardens and then upgrade it later. Yeah. Once you get Randuins, it slows the movement speed as well, which just, just helps a lot when Bane tries to cut you. So we'll see where they can go. Zion has a bunch of like conflicted item needs as well. He's like, oh, I don't have my like Bruin King done yet, but that would help me deal damage. I don't have Spirit Visit done yet. That would be kind of nice. Well, he has to do so many things for his team. That's yeah. kind of, you can see, he wants to do it all for the team. He wants to be able to kill double up. He wants to be able to split push. He wants to be the tank. But he's the only one with kills, and he's got so much on his shoulders that he has to carry right now. We'll see with the Dragon Wings if it helps him carry a little bit more here. 7.3 thousand now putting CLG ahead and Devil just keeps getting dollar after dollar here. 251 minions, the highest in the game right here. The AD carry is actually mirroring their item builds, but Vayne just does more with these items here. And Devil is extremely happy that he's gotten past the early game in a very good laning phase. Yeah. And now he's just, uh, it's pretty much time to display those Vayne mechanics that he's known for. And he does get, you know, to meet up Zion here. So we've got a preview of this duel. All right, let's At see. At this moment, Zion's got the upper hand. Double starting well. Pushing him back, he's waiting on the, on the ulti. Ulti comes back through. Good flash, and Dexter shows up. That's not a duel. Dexter, you cheated. Shutdown comes across, and CLG on a yeah. 5 4 I mean, we can... We'll give it to him that one. But he had the entire CLG team coming out. That's why yeah. uh, Zion started running away there. And the ward coverage getting swept away. They do see CLG starting this, but it's a it's a four versus five, and the a guy with all your kills is dead right now. Coast gonna have a very hard time at this one. And dude looking forward. He's got the reveal. There's they the go it. Look for Link. Look for a lot of damage. They're doubling the back lines. No ulti there. Can they get the fight going through? And Nintendo gonna get dropped down. One for zero so far. Dangerman now forced to run. Shockwave back in. Two for zero. CLG win that fight decisively. They go back towards Baron. Uh, Shifter still has his Deathfire available. He might be able to get in there and kill one person, but it will be so dangerous. 
Afro's been very, very quick with his pulverizes. Yeah, they're going to be safe with that one. Dexter taking away Baron 6, 0, and 3. So much of the gold from CLG is on the jungler, but he keeps making it work. And he's spent his gold in a team-oriented way. You know, he's picked up the Solari, the, uh, the Locket of the Iron Solari there. Uh, he's going to add not only the aura, but also the shield. Push in now towards this turret. There's the damage going through. Dexter gets the turret credit as well. He's taken all the scoreboard lines. That name keeps popping up for everything. I mean, everyone on the team is making plays, though. Yeah. Just because Elise has an execute, she mm -hmm. gets to see her name in lights a lot more because the last hitting and champions. But everybody on CLG is really doing well. I have to say, it's again another game where they've had great communication and they played the game well, not only just from Champion Select, but all the way through the mid game here. So they've made it very tough for Coast, but they're trying to make a comeback here. Dragon is a great mechanic to get a comeback started, but CLG are not going to let you have that for free. Oh, let's see, they're going to start the look right there. They do the damage. Aphromir even pulled. Oh. Ooh, close one. After we even pulverized, deal a bit more damage, didn't do enough there. It was, of course, still picked up by Dexter. So, more score lines for him. You've seen the top lane split push still continuing. Zion versus Double Lift. And I feel like it's going better and better for Vayne over time. Yep. And He's I don't know, Coast, like, their options aren't working. Yeah, well, they're just getting further and further behind in gold at this point. Um, it's it's going to be really rough. They have to. And when you get to the point where you're down this much gold, you have to catch somebody out of position because they can't win straight up fights. And especially with the CLG team that we talked about earlier, uh, in the late game, they have a really good team fight. So they have to count on Shifter trying to find somebody and blow them up. Yeah, and they are. They're methodically taking control of this game, kind of logic gaming. This reminds me actually a bit of their game versus Curse uh, a while back where they're just sort of able to just like keep pushing and kind of doing whatever. Like CLG mm -hmm. haven't really forced the issue. They're just like, we'll show up for this turret. We know we're in control. We'll show up for this dragon, but this Baron, we know we're in control. And they're making these confident movements without even that much vision. Yeah. Usually at this point in the game, you'll see the teams just litter the, their opponent's jungle with wards. CLG haven't placed that many wards, actually. So they probably want to use this Baron buff to get that vision down. Because while the Baron buff's up, there's no way that Coasts want to fight them. So it should be very easy for CLG to grab the vision right now while they have this huge, huge uh, lead over Coast. Yeah, should be able to. We'll see. We got wards in the inventories of the jungler and mid laner. Dexter and Link holding some. Double lift hungry, though. Farming up What's the lane. What's that bottom lane? So. That's an objective to itself. Like, getting Baron is nice, but getting a lane for double lift is, like, as important for the team. And that's not even a joke. That's, ac that's, that's like an actual goal. <laughs> yeah, an actual CLG goal. It's like, okay, so uh, plan of attack number three is you go bottom lane and we'll uh, sweep wards for you. Uh, so, bottom lane, he's even got a red elixir there. Double lift, happy to keep going. After three items, building towards a Negatron Cloak. Could be Banshees, could be Quicksilver Sash. Which one he goes for. Red Buff gonna grab the way. Dexter happy to take that one. And Doublelift now on the turret. I really like Banshees against LeBlanc uh, instead of Quicksilver Sash because he doesn't really have to worry about some stray cocoon or something blocking up Double Lift. Mm -hmm. It's all about the burst damage. He wants to block the actual damage, yeah. not really uh, the CC there. And the, the only CC that he really has to worry about is that Leona. Which, you know, the Banshees is going to block that Solar Flare as well. Here we go. It's going to push in now towards the bottom inhibitor turret. Baron buff timing out very soon. This is the last wave with Baron. So CLG will continue their push without the pretty little purple flowers. That's going to be enough for them anyway. They got a gold lead. Yeah. And, you know, with their venture bottom, they have been able to put up that line of vision in the bottom side jungle. They've got red side completely taken care of here. Able to whittle down this turret. Turrets also regenerate very slowly. So, uh, what is it, 90 HP 90 per wave. wave? Yeah. So they don't want to let this one go because they've got it down half already. I'll see. It's going to get down to about one third as well. CLG, about 4,000 gold unspent in their pockets, but it's enough. 51,000 gold worth of items is plenty for these guys. They're still looking at the front door. Double up takes Whoa. the shield oh, right he into it. Into the solar flare. The damage comes through. He flashes out, gets kicked away by Lee Sin. And he's now in the back line, stunning up Zion's part. I'm just watching Vayne hit things right now, and they're all dying in front of him. Gets the Mikhails, keeping him alive. And, well, that didn't work for Coast. Not ideal for CLG, but Afro able to save double oh! and again. The ball delivery cow making it happen. Two, three kills so far. Coast dropping left and right in the end. Gets his of vengeance. Revenge, that's the one on the Zion Spartan. <laughs> Wiz Fuji's alive, and he's like, um, 
I'm outnumbered here. Yeah, they're so far ahead that even with Double Lift tumbling into the Solar Flare, they still win the team fight and the game. And the chase in with Fusion goes down. Kill picked up. And that's going to be Counter Logic Gaming 14 to 3 in 33 and a half minutes, taking the game 2 0 on the week for these guys. All right. It has been many years in the making. But yeah. CLG seem to have reached some threshold for the potential that they held for so many years. Yeah. I think they finally met. When you got that much potential energy, they finally met it. when the ball finally drops, a lot of kinetic energy there. You saw them come out strong. The shockwave from that kinetic energy, Link making it happen. You're seeing them walk out. Relief and happiness on their faces there. These guys have only dropped one game since Dexter joined the roster. And that season. guy at the front, Afro, making yeah. the plays. A uh, couple of very good deliveries of the shockwave from him, as yep. well as a great laning phase. Yep. Mm -hmm. Using the matchup to his advantage, they were able to sort of bait coast into the pick. Yeah. And make great use of it. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Those two together, the Bail. rush hour bot lane. Two, zero, and nine Alistair with Talisman of Ascension. You saw him get in there. The combos worked. Only two, one, and five for double it. More assists than kills. I'm sure he's sad about that. But he still played a good game. A little bit. Uh, maybe the last play there where he tumbled into the Solar Flare will weigh on Double, or, uh, double Lift's mind. A, a little silly. He was paying that target for him. And he 